Okay, in this video, I've got a special treat for you. I was recently asked to join a live panel of industry players by IAPath's Chris Stanley. It was a pretty high powered group that included Adjuster Talk podcast host and the IA firm Royal Adjusting owner, Jason Heenan, the Adjuster Show's Adam Painter, Rob Galbraith, who is the best selling author of The End of Insurance as We Know It, Insurance Nerdery's John Bachman, and so many more. And we're not just talking about auto, we talked at length about property as well. And we were at it for almost three hours, but in this video, I've edited it down to just the highlights. It's still a long one, but it's a great one for playing during your commute or on your way to a cat site. And we're starting right now. This is Adjuster TV. Hey, it's Matt here with Adjuster TV. And for the best tips and tools for getting on the first call list as a cat property independent adjuster, subscribe now. Click on the bell notification and you'll be on your way. And thanks to Robert from YouTube who says, besides the obvious great IA content, professional brand and super video quality, I even love your bloopers and outtakes. It makes you even more real and relatable, Matt. You are educating noobs like me and helping to improve the quality of the industry one adjuster at a time. Hope your channel continues to grow because we need expert educators like you. Thanks for watching, Robert. I did not hire Robert to do my marketing, by the way. And in case you're watching this and you don't know what the heck Robert is talking about, as far as the bloopers and outtakes, I try to add a little something funny at the end of most of my videos. Not all, but many. So you kind of got to be sure to watch all the way through. Okay, I'm not going to spend a whole lot of time setting this up other than to say that Chris Stanley from IA Path created this open house as a way to celebrate his students who graduated from one of his signature courses. And what a great group of people. A lot of the content was question and answer, so if you've got questions, we've got answers in this video. And links to all these resources and everybody's website can be found below where you're watching this video. Okay, no more dilly-dally, let's just jump right in. Now, my first guest speaker, I, he, he was last minute. He had to make an entrance, and he's here to deliver a message, really, to the graduates of IAPATH. He's actually a part of our community. We invited him in for his mentorship and his claims experience working for an insurance company. And he likes to talk about being nice in claims and how that's important. It all seems very Greek to me. I don't know how to explain to you to be nice, but I'd like you to welcome to the virtual stage, Mr. John Bachman. Now, John, go ahead and unmute yourself. So, John, why don't you go ahead and take over from here, sir? Well, first and foremost, to the graduates tonight, congratulations. It, it's a huge deal. It really is. Chris in the IA PATH program, doing amazing things for IAs out there. So, thank you to Chris. Congratulations to the graduates. And really what I wanted to talk to you about, just real quickly here, we have a little bit of time is talk about, yeah, you've learned quite a bit of technical skills from, from Chris that are gonna help you uh, in your new career or pivoting your career. Um, but there's something near and dear to me that I think helps you throughout the career. And it's not anything you'll ever graduate from. You're always going to have to be working on these skills. And unfortunately, a lot of people call them soft skills. I absolutely hate that term because there is nothing soft about a soft skill. It's some of the hardest damn skills you'll have your entire life and you need it. It's necessary in order to succeed in anything, never mind just adjusting, but in life in general. So what am I talking about in terms of these, now we're calling them hard skills. I'm talking about listening, caring, empathizing. Those are some of the most important things that you're going to be using because remember, these folks are experiencing something awful in their life. And yeah, it may be just a fender bender to a piece of shit, let's be honest, but to them, that may be their baby. That could be something they save so much money, uh, working overtime to be able to afford. It could have been a hand-me-down. So even though it looks like a piece of shit to us, and it's a, it's a beater, that's something special to that person. So we have to put those skills into play. We, we need to listen, not just listen so we can answer questions, but listen to hear where they're coming from and truly understand. And when I say care, anybody can say they care, but truly invest yourself and then empathizing, understand where they're coming from. And so they know that they're not going through it alone. 
And I know this sounds awfully soft, but this is so damn important in adjusting claims. And you know, I, I talked about how hard it is, and it's because we're getting nailed with new claims every day, more emails, more calls, and, and we get bombarded. It's not easy to sit there and listen to some of these problems or, or truly invest yourself and care. But that's what's gonna separate you from the rest of the field. That's what's gonna get you onto so many more panels. Those are the important skills. So again, I, I just had a little bit of time here. Keep working on those skills along with the technical that Chris helped you out with, but keep working on them. Truly care about what you're doing and the people you care about. And when somebody tells you to work on those soft skills, tell them no, they're hard skills. And yes, I am gonna keep working on them. Congratulations again. Chris, thanks for having me on, brother. Man, that's awesome. Cool. John Bachman, woo! Love it, John. Appreciate it, man. Appreciate it. Now, this guest speaker is either a doomsday prophet or an insurance messiah. This is for you to determine, you, the listener, the viewer tonight, um, because he wants to share with you his vision of the insurance industry and the IA moving forward. It's none other than Rob Galbraith. I probably screwed it up again. He's the number one Amazon best-selling author of the end of insurance as we know it. I mean, All seriously, right. what is coming down our pipe? <laughs> so uh, it's good to be with all you guys tonight. And uh, special congratulations to all the graduates, man. That's awesome. Um, you worked your tails off, I could tell. And uh, yeah, it's, uh, I've been a, 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 a people leader for the last 10 years. And so when we talk about getting, getting feedback and we have a saying, uh, feedback is a gift, right? And sometimes it's not a gift you necessarily want to receive, but uh I know that uh, when you get that, that gift from Chris on the rejection, that it, it, it is in that spirit of just making you better, right? So um, anyway, I, I just, uh, I'm blown away, Chris, by your, your energy, your passion for the field, and your desire to, to help other people, and you're just, uh, you're an inspiration. And so everybody here tonight, even if you're just kind of tuning in and want to know what the whole um, IA field's all about, um, I, I, I congratulate you to your point, Chris. If, if you're here at night after hours, uh, in, in our open house tonight, um, just by that presence alone, you, you're motivated. So uh, I do want to share with you guys just a little bit. Uh, Chris actually gave me some, some homework. So we recorded a podcast. Uh, it's already seems like eons ago. I know it was like last week or whatever. But um, so I said, I'll be out soon. So look for that. That's on the, the IPATH podcast. So he, uh, when, I, when, when we talked to the podcast, I did not actually have a physical copy of the book because, guys, this is like brand new, hot off the presses, right? So Chris said, you have to get a book for Tuesday night. So here you go for Chris and for you guys. I know it's like like mirror type, so you guys have to hold it up like a mirror. But uh, So that's what it looks like. That's the paperback version. It's uh, $34.95 on Amazon, and we just put out the Kindle version. So uh, if you prefer a digital copy or if you want to save a few bucks, uh, the Kindle version is only $19.99 uh, on Amazon. So check it out. Of course, I can't sign your Kindle version if we, we cross paths at any point, right? So uh, I do like the Dead Trees version a little bit myself. So um, just a little bit of background about me, guys. Um, I, uh, I've been in the industry over 20 years. The vast majority of that has been as an underwriter. And I kind of joke that... Um, you know, the underwriters, like the, the, the claims guy's worst nightmare, you kind of go up and you're like, why did you add this risk to the book? Or what are you thinking or whatever? And uh, so as an underwriter, we're always getting the feedback because you guys see the, the, the bad stuff, right? The end result. You don't necessarily see the, the, all the stuff that looked just like that risk, but, but was fine, right? You're only seeing the, the stuff that the losses happened at or the bad weather happened or whatever. Um, and then as an underwriter, right, we're always thinking the claims uh, job's easy, right? Oh, yeah, you just, just write it up, man. Just take a photo and write it up and move on, right? There, there's nothing to it. And so uh, as an underwriter, like, we'll, we'll review sometimes, you know, we're, what's driving our losses? I'm trying to understand, you know, why are we losing money, whatever. And you come across a file and you're like, man, well, that that's over the limits or that's not written up right or whatnot. And so you go to uh, your claims partners and, and give that feedback and, Usually that feedback is, is uh, from a claims professional, as you guys all are, that graduated tonight uh, from an underwriter that's never written an estimate in his life. That's pretty much like, well, if you have so much time in your hands to go through looking at my claims and do a quality check, 
why don't you start pulling some claims from the bucket, buddy, and grab that list of 100 to help me out, right? So, uh, so anyway, so there's always a, a little bit of a healthy, but, you know, really, I do think um, from a claims and underwriting standpoint, right, it's, it's um, right, it, 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 you, you know, you guys see stuff that is critical feedback to us and then vice versa, right, just kind of giving that feedback and really explaining the industry. So one of the things that I think is really cool about the book is it does give you what I would say is a crash course at a high level, just about the insurance industry in general. So not just, you know, job specific, but what is the loss ratio? What is the combined ratio? How does the carrier make money? Um, and, and then what are some things that aren't going right in the insurance industry? So I, I have what I call seven fatal flaws about insurance. And I know each of you has to buy insurance on your own. So you can probably relate to some of this. It's, it's too darn expensive, right? It costs a lot of money. Um, it's too confusing. Some stuff's covered, other stuff's covered. That's what you guys are trying to figure out. And that's really where those, those hard skills, that empathy that we were talking about is, um, and that's where I've seen I shine guys is that a tough conversation when you're going through, hey, the damage is what the damage is, the policy covers what the policy covers, right? And so I'm um, walking that person through and really, quite honestly, for that policyholder, it's often the first time they really have gotten into the details, they really start understanding what exactly do I have here? Um, I say in the book, you know, is insurance a product? Is insurance a service? It's really confusing. It's like, well, it's kind of both, right? I mean, it's something you have to have to drive off the, the car off the lot or to get a mortgage on your home. Um, and you know, you have to have certain coverages, and whatever, but like, it's not really until that bad thing happens and you're lost that you're actually familiar. And at that point, right, when you have to get it, you just want to be done. Give me a price. Okay, move on, check the box, I'm done, right? I don't think about it again. Set it and forget it is what I tell people that at that moment of claim, you're gonna take hours, you're gonna take as much time as you need to make sure that it's fixed right, make sure everything's covered, that you're not gonna have to pay, you're not getting screwed right and all out. And so that's really where um, th those, host, those hard skills, that empathy is, is crucial. It's not just about the damage and assessing it, right? Because that's part of what's coming, guys, is um, artificial intelligence, um, there's already stuff like Snapsheet knows where you take a photo and it can create an estimate just based on the photo. Now, how accurate it is, how good of a job it does, can it see undercarriage damage and stuff like that, right? It, it still has a long way to go. But, um, you know, as you guys are, are interfacing with the software and what you're actually, in some cases, and it'll definitely be true in the future, you're actually going to be training the AI, right? So just as you guys go on Amazon and you buy the end of insurance as we know it, right, uh, which you're going to hopefully do, um, it's going to suggest other books, right? People like you also like these other types of books as well, right? And uh, so, um, you know, all that kind of stuff that we're used to, like maps, how does Siri know what's going on, all that kind of stuff, all that is artificial intelligence behind the scenes. And I know we think about it with a, a Facebook or a Google or Amazon, but, but that's going to be our lives going forward. That's going to be our world. And so you've got to be comfortable with technology You've got to be comfortable with learning new skills as, as the graduates have demonstrated. And it was so powerful, this testimonials of I didn't know anything five weeks ago when I started. And I, I took this class. I wanted to improve myself. I wanted to become a professional. Um, and I, I fell on my butt, right? And I, I got it wrong. And it was really hard. And I really had to, to work at it. But I got to that point. Um, so uh, a couple of the things I talk about the insurance industry, right? Okay. Expensive, confusing. It's too easy to game the system, right? It's very easy to have a lot of fraud. So that's another reason that we need adjusters. We need somebody that's trained to figure out what is this is really legit and what looks like maybe it's a staged accident or something like that. Um, it's a cash drain. So it's kind of forced savings, right? If you think about like a credit card, hey, you know, if a bad thing happens, I can just put it on a credit card and then I can decide how much I want to pay every month. Well, insurance dictates you've got to pay that premium every month. doesn't matter, right? And you can shop around a little bit, but you don't get a flexibility and, you know, how much you pay in your premium every month. The premium is a premium. If you don't pay it, your policy is going to get canceled. Um, it's almost like a forced savings, but then you, know, you kind of hope you don't use your insurance. So it's like, hey, 90% of the time I'm not going to use it. So I'm, I'm paying every month for something I'm not going to use, but yet it's, it's tens of not hundreds of dollars I've got to pay. That's a significant part of our, our budget. Like other stuff, I, I got to pay the utility bill. I got to keep the lights on, keep the water on, keep food on the table. Like, okay, I get it. I don't like paying it, but I uh, like the, what I get for that is kind of very immediate, right? Um, but with insurance, it's not so obvious what you necessarily get. 
Um, it doesn't cover everything. It doesn't cover every one, and it doesn't cover every peril. And so, um, yeah, there's lots of confusion, lots of, lots of room for improvement in the insurance industry. And so, um, I kind of asked the question in the book, like, hey, how come insurance hasn't been Uberized yet? Like, how come there isn't something just like Uber's kind of disrupted taxis and all that, highly regulated, right? You had to um, go through a whole bunch of stuff to get a, a taxi medallion and be a licensed driver and whatnot. And Uber just came in, they didn't try to create a better taxi system. They just did something totally different on personal transportation, right? Had an app-based system, very slick or whatnot. With all these problems with insurance, how come somebody hasn't done that with our industry? And so there's some reasons for that. It doesn't mean it can't be done, but there's some reasons and the book kind of walks you through that. It also kind of talks about blockchain, telematics, smart home, like some of the stuff that maybe you've seen thrown out there and Chris and I were talking about on the podcast, it's like, okay, man, I see that term, but I don't, my head's gonna explode. I don't know, I can't keep up with that. I'm, I've got all these claims I gotta do and I'm just trying to get get done with my day or whatnot, but I, I feel blockchain. like I should know that stuff. I uh, hear the term blockchain and I get like convulsion. I'm like, <laughs> there's this makes no sense. Sense. All right, no, sorry, is, I had to say. This just gives you, and, and, and Chris has read some, it just gives you just some basics, okay? Just so, just like you guys said, uh, you know, learning and, and it's really about um, taking that one step beyond and becoming what I would call an insurance industry professional at large, not just an IA profession, right? But a an insurance professional. And then the, the fourth part is really kind of where's all this headed? I kind of get the crystal ball out a little bit. Um, I don't have any secret answers, but um, there could be guys some ways to think about it as well. And so hopefully that part is really uh, thought provoking to you. And, and you guys are actually on the front lines, right? Because you're seeing claims day in, day out. And so you see trends over time and things have changed. And Chris has to add more to the IA path program, right? Because stuff comes up, there's emerging trends and whatnot. You guys are the first one to see those kinds of things. And you're going to pass that on to you know, agents, carriers, and, and you're going to see it. So um, again, you know, this is definitely uh, light reading or optional reading. I know you guys have spent a ton of time already in reading and investing in your education, but um, I highly encourage you to do it. If you're motivated enough to be here tonight, I think, you know, it, it is intended as an easy read. So it, it, I know Chris set it up as like, oh, Jesus, the wizard, the future, and all that, right? Um, but it, it is really intended just to kind of be, to educate you, to give you a very quick overview of the industry and where it's going, um, and, and just to prepare you uh, for the future. So all the investment that you've made in IA Path or may make an IA Path, if you're here tonight, kind of just kicking the tires. Um, you want that to pay off. You've done the hard work or you're thinking about doing the hard work if you go through the program, you want that to last. You don't want to have to be on to the next career in a, in a year or two. And so uh, that's where I think having this book, just preparing you, it's a roadmap, right, of what's to come. So Chris, I'll turn it over to you, brother. But our next guest has the very best video quality in the industry. He probably wears makeup because he just looks so darn good on camera. And he wants to share tonight with you how you can make more money. So if you're interested in that, then definitely need to pay attention to Adjuster TV's Matthew Allen. This is this is really cool. I'm I'm really excited about this. And like like Rob was saying, man, you're bringing a lot of passion to this. This is it's so cool that you're doing this. Um, I I'm very appreciative, and you know I'm just sitting here mainly listening. So um, I guess the question that I get the most frequently is, is this worth it? Right? Is Stepping outside of your comfort zone and uh, taking some training and doing something kind of almost based, it's almost like going to Vegas a little bit because you're like, you heard about this guy that made a bunch of money and, you know, it's, he's your neighbor's nephew's uncle or whatever. And that's all the information that you can find, right? That's one of the reasons why uh, Chris is doing this, why I'm doing this. I know Jason Heenan, I think he's on here. Um, he's got a podcast. He's, he's, we're trying to get information out for you guys so that you can kind of, uh, sh kind of shortcut some of the, the learning curve to this and to help us, you know, sort of raise the level of everything in our industry. And specifically what I talk, what, what I want to talk to you guys about tonight is cycle time. And I've never done auto claims per se. I did do some stuff for on source, um, which is actually pretty cool. It's basically photo inspections. Um, 
but it was, you t they set the whole thing up, you, you accept, and then you go take a look at it or whatever. So it wasn't really me doing any contacting or having to worry too much about cycle time. But for well, on the property side, at least, cycle time is kind of the, it's sort of the metric that is the rules all the other metrics, right? So, and, it, and it's, it's one of those things like there's a little bit of a misconception about it. Um, it's basically the time that you have to close the claim, right? So claim gets assigned to you. You've got X number of days or hours to close the claim, right? And the insurance companies, they've got, uh, they, they want to have claims close as quickly as possible. If, if somebody calls in on Monday, ideally in a perfect world for the carrier, that claim gets closed on Tuesday. The customer is super happy because they got taken care of right away. They didn't have to wait around. Um, so the faster we can get claims done, the happier pretty much everybody is. Uh, one of the problems, at least on the cat side, is that when you get assigned a claim, the cycle time doesn't start when you get it assigned to you Monday morning. It started on Friday afternoon when the customer called in and said, hey, I've got hail damage to my house. So you're behind the ball. So if you've got an eight day cycle time, you have, you're supposed to be turning claims in within eight days, you've already lost you know, two and a half days or two days of your cycle time. So now you've got six days to close that claim. Um, one of the best ways as, and as independent adjusters, we get paid as, you know, by the claim. So the more claims that we can do, the more money that we'll make. But the problem is, is that if we, if we try to be just really super fast, then we're going to get a reputation as being, the guy that's really fast, that runs in guns, and you know the quality of the claim is terrible. The customers are upset because the guy said he was going to be there at ten. He showed up at seven forty-five, did the whole thing, didn't tell anybody he was there. I mean, it's, there's run and gun people that will go out and, and smash out claims like that, and they'll handle forty claims in a week, no problem. Property claims on a hailstorm, but and that guy might work. He might be one of the first guys on the storm, but he's also one of the first guys that gets sent home and they'll say, yeah, thanks for coming out. You know, we appreciate you helping us and stuff. But it's the guys and gals that when, they, when they're looking at cycle time, they're looking at it as a customer service tool. And, and, you know, John was talking about it earlier. It's a hard skill, right? So writing estimates is, it's a, it's a skill that you can learn, right? And it's your estimate, if, you know, if there's 69 people in here, 65 people in here, we should all write an estimate for, for looking at the same damage. It's within about 10% of, of every, we should be a pretty you know, equal across the board. It's where the people who take the extra time to communicate with the insured, who, who are using empathy, and I mean, everybody's been saying it, everybody in here has been, has been doing claims at all. The first things that we say is you've got to have some empathy. You got to kind of put yourself in the shoes of that person. Um, the people that do that, and also who spend a little bit extra time making sure that they don't miss damage on houses in particular um, are going to have faster cycle time. And I just said that if they spend more time doing those things, they're gonna be faster. How does that even make sense? Well, the way it makes sense for me and the way it's worked for me is that if I go to somebody's house and I can really super communicative and I'm very friendly and I'm, I'm you know, kind and, and like joshing around with their roofing contractor and I'm not being a, a jerk, um, it puts the customer at ease, right? Uh, they ask questions, I answer the questions. If I can't get the question answered, I call somebody and get that question answered right then. You know, it's, the, it's all that stuff that you guys probably know. Um, that customer is satisfied that they got a fair shake. There's, especially if their contractor's there, everybody's nodding their heads yes. Even if I spend a little bit extra time doing that, because that claim doesn't reopen for, or I get more phone calls on it from the customer calling me back, or the agent calls and says, you know, my, my customer called in and they were confused about the thing. You know, can you explain it to me and then I'll call them. You know, it's, it's anytime that you can cut off having to, to touch a file again, let's just put it that way, then you're going to save yourself a massive amounts of time. And the higher the quality that you have in your estimates, the the more the carriers are going to like you because their customers are satisfied that they got a fair shake and they've got the fair customary and reasonable estimate for the work that they did. The customer, the contr their contractor looked at it and said, yeah, it looks great. And they got the job done and it's done. It's not on anybody's desk anymore. It's, it's over. The claims closed. 
when they, and they track these numbers, right? So they track like for me or anybody else that does your property claims, at least anytime that there's a supplement that shows up in one of the columns on my sheet, you know, I've got cycle time. I've got my customer service score based on the net promoter thing or touch points or whatever. And then I've got supplements. So if I go to the house and I run a gun and I miss all, a bunch of damage, I missed, you know, 60 linear feet of uh, metal awnings on the back side of the house and I didn't get this or that, or I missed the water spot inside because I just didn't, I didn't want to go inside the house because it would slow me down. You know, I took a glance at the garden shed from across the yard. That claim is going to reopen. And if it doesn't reopen for me, it's going to reopen for somebody else. And it's going to be a whole lot more work because somebody probably has to go back out to the house. So now you've got, it's double the work, right? So cycle time, if you can concentrate on building in efficiencies to, to everything that you do and work on customer service and really have empathy for people and understand like, like uh, you know, guys were saying earlier, I think it was John that was, was saying, you know, if you've got somebody that's got a piece of junk car, um, that's their car, right? It doesn't matter if it's a piece of junk or not, it's still their car. And, they, and it's just as big of a crisis to them as if it was like a brand new Tesla, right? Um, same deal on somebody's house. If they have a water spot on the ceiling and they're calling everybody, they're calling the president because they want to have somebody out their house yesterday for this because their ceiling's falling in and you go to the house and there's a, a water spot the size of a coffee or a, you know, a coaster on their ceiling, then you're like, oh, yeah, this isn't that big of a deal. But you don't act like it's not that big of a deal because to them it is, right? It's, it's their roof, which is above that coffee you know, stain on the ceiling coaster size, you know, I keep saying coffee. I don't know. Maybe I need to drink some more coffee. Um, the roof's above that. And the roof is, you know, it could be 15 or $25,000 instead of just, you know, 500 bucks to fix the, the spot on the ceiling. So they're thinking, they're not thinking about that spot. They're thinking about the roof and they have to take off work for it. And it's a big deal. So I always have to tell people, you know, those kind of people who make a big deal out of a small thing, you treat them just like, you know, it's, you're going to your grandma's house and you're helping her out with a claim. Um, and, and you treat everybody that way. And having cu high customer service levels like that is, like I said, it's going to always help your cycle time. It's going to help you be faster just because the claim doesn't reopen again. And if it does, it might be they, they just send you a, a little message to say, you know, we f you forgot one thing or thanks for coming out. We really appreciate it. We just got our check, you know, kind of thing. So it's not going to blow up in, into a big mess of, I mean, it's literally like if, if you go to, to a storm site and you inspect 10 claims on Monday and turn them all in, and maybe it's been four or five or six months since you, you did a storm, you're going to get all those files kicked back for something dumb. Like you forgot to put the, the header on the, in the estimate or something, just something ridiculous. So you got to get go back in each, every single one of those and fix it, right? And that's just extra time. So the, the bottom line of everything I'm trying to say here is that if you, if you spend time concentrating on putting together a quality product that, that's, that is, covers everything, it's not like you're just gonna pretend like you didn't see you know, the taillight that's busted or whatever, and it's, you know, somebody else can add it later. If you kick the can down the road, then that's, it's going to add, you're going to get that can kicked back to you probably. But you spend time on your customer service and having a, a good quality file, then your cycle time will automatically start to shrink because you're, you're not having to do extra things during the day. Because the only, we're not just always doing, you know, estimates and, inspections, we're also on the phone a bunch. And if you, the more phone work you have, you could spend 15 minutes per phone call. Four phone calls is an hour, right? And that's an hour that I could, I could have closed a hail claim if I have four claims kicked back to me that I got to make calls on, right? So cycle time is not just being fast, it's being good. And that's, I, I think, you know, and that whole big long-winded thing, and this is why my videos are edited so heavily is because I, I tend to ramble like this. And, but my, my point is, the bottom line, again, is, is that solid files, good customer service, and you, your, your cycle time will decrease because, and you also get a lot more work because the carriers love you, the insurers love you, the IA firms love you, and you're going to end up getting up onto that first call list, and then you're going to be super busy. And the better you are, at, you know, the busier you're going to be even in slow years. And that's, that's been my experience. And, um, 
you know, I've, I've been doing this for a long time. And, and when I tried to be fast and not really think about quality, those were the times that I was like, you know, you'd get 60 or 80 claims and then they're like, all right, Matt, we're wrapping it up. And my buddy's still on the storm two months later. I'm like, well, why are you still, what, what did I do? And then I look back and I'm like, yeah, I was, I was kind of being a Rambo and going too fast. So um, speed is not necessarily a function of fast motion. It's about efficiency and quality. So that's really what I wanted to say. So you guys still there? What? <laughs> Loved it, man. No, it was awesome. Matthew Allen, Juster TV, best TV camera quality. Keep it coming, man. I love it. In the industry, no doubt. There's no competition, man. Even with my lights that I got in today, thanks to you suggesting them, I'm still nowhere near you. So um, what Matt is saying is so true. In the auto industry, it's the same thing. And Robert Nodine is going through hell his first week and a half of his getting claims. And so he's finding out all the things that can trip you up from them not being clear who the claimant is and not spending the time to figure that out to, oh my gosh, uh, I got to request mileage. If I don't, I'm going out there for free to, man, I missed something small. They want, or, or they want me to take everything off the estimate because of some weird unknown reason. Like the kickbacks will kill you. What Matt's saying is if you just run through you close every claim. You don't really process it through what needs to be done properly and accurately to the guidelines, right? Not always to our expectations and standards, but to the guidelines we've been given to close claims in. You're going to get tons of kickbacks and you're going to waste a ton of time. Auto is two days. Like he was saying, eight days. Auto is two days. That's not much margin for error. So when you get a kickback and if you did 10 claims the day before, which I've seen people do 23 in a day, all of a sudden, you kicked back in mass, and all of a sudden, you're spending 15, 20 minutes on each one. You're you're overwhelmed. So, Matt, love it, love it, love it. And uh, some of that is what we're going to be talking about with the scheduling piece and the hail, because in catastrophe, especially, and that's what Matt's talking about, is during catastrophes, it, it gets really crazy because there's so many claims. Um, so every problem is, is then exacerbated. Um, so, all right. Uh, but what I'm super excited about is our next guest. It's the host of The Adjuster Show, Adam Painter. And The Adjuster Show is br a brand new podcast. And I want to let Adam come on and tell you all about his new podcast for adjusters. Chris, Adam. can you hear me? What's up, man? Can you guys hear me? Oh, there you are, man. <laughs> what, what is uh, This is freaking awesome, dude. This is I'm, amazing. I love the venue. I love the format. The community that you're building is freaking incredible, man. This is this is so exciting. I'm I'm humbled and and grateful to you and Matt. And I see Jason just popped in and, and Rob What's earlier. Up? You guys are you guys are freaking awesome, man. I'm good to I'm so excited to be hanging out with you. This is cool. So yeah, I started a podcast. Um, I'm an adjuster in the field. I'm out there doing the deal. Um, I'm at a conference right now, so you know this is not my room. Um, and I got questions, you know, I, I, where's the industry going? Um, you know, this whole technology thing, this virtual inspector thing, you know, are we going to be the auto guys? Are you guys be doing, you know, electric vehicles pretty soon. You're like, where is this whole thing going? I have questions. I know that other people have questions. So I just started this podcast called the adjuster show. And I'm just going to ask people flat out, you know, like, what's your take on it? What's, what's going on? I'm, I'm interviewing, like firm owners and, and carrier CEOs. And, you know, I'm just asking them, like, are you guys adopting this virtual inspector thing? Are you, are you guys trying to put us out of business or, you know, what's going on with the hover app? And like, are you guys, what's going on with schedule it? Like where, where are we going to be in five years? And, you know, people are answering the questions. I don't know why, but I'm, I'm recording it and, <laughs> and I'm putting it out there and it's, it's exciting, man. It's fun. So, it's called The Adjuster Show. Just launched it today. You know, you can find it on iTunes, Stitcher, you know, all the usual suspects. Um, this is so awesome. Your community, Chris, is just freaking amazing. So <laughs> well, I'm grateful. They, this, is, this is cool. They are amazing. Now, 
Adam, when I talked to him on the phone, I mean, it hasn't been that long. It's not like we, we know each other for years and we are talking in a back room, plotting and scheming, like some people seem to think, but not at all. But uh, Matthew Allen said, hey, you need to meet this guy. And I said, okay, sure, I'll meet this guy, whatever he's going to do. Sure, great. <laughs> but what Adam is, is trying to do is it's super- networking, man. It, it, it is, is the networking. It worked. There's a book about that I hear too, but um, Adam- when he sold me on his podcast, because I'm like, yeah, sure, you're going to do a podcast. Of course, there's room for another podcast. Well, what's going to make yours different and all that? He's like, well, I want to be the one-stop shop for everything. Like, I talk about auto. Jason Heenan's talking about property and rocking it out over there. Jason, so glad you're on here tonight, man. Honored. And uh, But he's like, but, you know, I want to talk about gear. I want to talk about the training options. I want to be everything, a smattering to where you come to a website and there's just lists of resources, right? And I was like, dude, that's amazing because I don't want to do that. I know the gear, but I don't want to list the gear. I don't have time for that. So I'll just send you my crap. So Adam, super excited, man. So yeah, I, man. I, I didn't even look what came out today. I was a little busy with getting ready for this. Uh, but when does, does our episode out or when's it come out? Yep. Uh, your episode has not come out yet. Uh, okay. I saved that for a little bit later. I'm going to get your get this launch thing going for you and then we'll we'll set it up but and then Matt's is out but today I launched one with a contractor you know there's some there's a source of contention between adjusters and contractors and I sat down with a contractor and we headed out you know we went back and forth like why do you guys hate us you know let me tell you why we hate you guys you know this is what you do to piss us off and you know we we went back and forth and it was super exciting I learned a ton of things um yeah it was fun so but it's out today you can you can go check it out all right, iPath community and anybody who happened to stop in tonight, definitely let's support Adam doing this. Let's go make his iTunes numbers blow up and let's leave a review. Like I'm going to say that because I'm a podcaster. Yeah. You can't overstate reviews enough because nobody knows if a podcast is good until somebody tells them. And the only way we can do that is leaving it. So even if you don't listen on iTunes, go to iTunes and leave a review for Adam. I'm, I'm sticking myself out there for that. All right, man. Awesome. You got anything it. else? Are you good? Nope. Uh, just keep doing what you guys are doing. Um, you know, follow Matt on Adjuster TV, follow Jason, um, go get Rob's book. I just finished it. It's, it will blow your hair back or off. I'm telling you it, uh, it's, it's a roadmap to, you know, where the industry was, where it is and where it could be going. And it walks you through the entire thing. It's, it's pretty amazing. So go check it out. Certainly. Absolutely. And I meant to have a poll set up of who had the better beard between Matthew Allen, Jason Heenan, and Adam, uh, but I, I, I didn't get it set up in time. So awesome. Thanks for being on, man. And thank you so much for doing another podcast and giving the eyes another place to listen and, and learn. Thanks, guys. Man, this is blast. Man, this is so awesome. Adam, thanks so much, man. Just so exciting. Right now, we're going to bring up Jason Heenan. He is a fighter, and he wants to show you how to beat out others in the IA industry. And I don't think there's anyone more qualified to use that kind of terminology than none other than Just Your Talk, its own host, Jason Heenan. Jason, brother, are you here? Hey, are what's you? up, Chris? How are you, man? There he is. I was going to say, I know he didn't dupe out on me. There ain't no way. Dude, <laughs> you look good. How you doing? Hey, great, Chris, and thanks for inviting me on the show tonight. I can't believe you got everyone together on a, uh, what is it, Tuesday night, and uh, what, did you say we have 65 or 70 people on? Man, that is outstanding. Um, Matt at Adjuster TV, thanks for the uh, shout out. Adam, I would love to tell you what we're doing out here uh, at, at Royal to combat uh, the technology. And uh, I just, I wanted to answer that question I heard earlier, uh, what, do we have jobs in five years? And right now, uh, by the math I'm doing for the carriers that we work for, we're still beating out the data collection services by about $150 a claim, which is a substantial amount of money whenever you peanut butter over a lot of claims. Um, they do have the advantage over speed. They're running about a 4.6 day cycle time. Uh, our company's running uh, a 6.8 calendar day uh, cycle time compared to that. So we're losing two days, but the uh, caveat is we are uh, coming in with a much lower uh, supplement rate because we're using craftsmen and experienced adjusters. And um, 
let's see, there was one other uh, very, very big uh, advantage. Oh, our customer satisfaction surveys are obviously better because uh, there is a person at one point in time that stops and competently talks to the insured as opposed to just passing off data um, to several different sources and then having someone collect it and put it in a report and send it over to the insurance carrier. So we, um, you bet you, we're moving forward with the old IA plan. Um, we've, uh, uh, as a company, we've had to level up uh, from uh, you know the level one adjusting company, uh, which is just an enormous network of uh, adjusters basically. And then you, uh, uh, you know, go through the phone book and call them whenever something bad happens to an actual structure. And that has helped us lean out our billing and lean out our exits and that kind of stuff. Um, so that's the answer to the five-year question. You bet your butt. I, I think that there's plenty of room for eager people to come in here. And um, that's it, it, like, to me, suggesting that a trade job like a plumber or an HVAC or uh, an electrician is going to go away. I don't think there's any way an insurance adjuster is going to go away. They've been around since the beginning of insurance. Um, and ultimately, they have to have the technical knowledge. You can't fill that gap with a report. You have, somebody has to have the technical, technical knowledge somewhere. So uh, my answer is a hard yes on that question. But that wasn't even the question Chris invited me on here. Um, we wanted to uh, prepare. Uh, Chris asked the question, how do you beat out uh, the competition whenever they have the upper hand on experience? And so there are uh, several things we've talked about already that, that is tied into being a good insurance adjuster. And that is um, how fast he can make a phone call, how fast he can get out there, um, how fast he can take all the data he's gathered and organize it to report and get it back to the insurance company and um, how well he treats the customer while he does that. Those are all very important factors. Um, and where an experienced adjuster is going to have you, new graduates, beaten out is he is going to have you on a deep experience. Uh, like, that's his advantage is he's seen everything. So um, your advantage, of course, then, is not that, obviously. Your advantage over him is going to be availability. And where I've seen uh, uh, criticism of these um, blanket data gathering jobs, I think they're just a new front level job as an insurance adjuster, nothing more, nothing less. It's just you're sent out, um, you know, with 150 yes, no questions to answer. And, um, uh, you know, a tape measure and, and a camera. It's basically like your first day, you know, your very first three bedroom, two bath, or, you know, whatever the first Honda Accord you go out on. Um, that's where you start. That's nothing more, nothing less. There's nothing to worry about that. Uh, again, they still have to have technical knowledge. Somebody uh, in, in the, in the four or five different jobs that gather up that data, someone in those five jobs, at least one person has to have adequate knowledge of how to settle an insurance claim. And so um, eventually that's where you wanna work your uh, work into. But uh, the question was, how do you beat those people out? The answer is availability. Um, and uh, Kagan Blackburn, uh, shout out to you brother. There's nobody who's done a better job uh, for me this year. Um, and I've used him on just a few in, in and out issues but Kagan has made it very clear that he is eager to solve your insurance problems. And he understands that he doesn't know, um, you know, maybe some, some big coverage gray areas that we routinely run into and stuff like that. But that's not why you use a new person. Um, the, the reason you use a new person is because you need them out there and you, and you need them to be good with the customer and you need um, someone who is responsive. And so I'm looking, whenever, whenever we get these uh, resumes in, I am looking for that kind of eagerness. Uh, I'm looking for words like priority. I'm looking for keywords uh, when, I'm, when I'm going through these estimates. 
And uh, I want to know that I am your priority right now. I want to know that you have a, a heavy interest in insurance. I want to know that you spent the money and you've spent the time doing your homework. Uh, this isn't just some sort of uh, thing you're doing in between your jobs. You know, this is a career for me, obviously, this is my 15th year. And so I want to see, you know, some of that, some of myself in your resume. Um, so that is my advice right out of the gate for you guys looking for work is do not write your estimate or write your estimate, write your resume or have your uh, uh, resume written around the idea that you are uh, fit for a high end claims job because you're not right. But you are fit to go out there and get it done. And that, that there is a place for that in this industry almost nonstop. Now I, I would say uh, February 19th of 2019 is probably the driest day of claims we will see this year. Um, and I can say that because I'm getting uh, resumes from claims directors uh, that are looking for work. Everyone's scared right now. Well, that's, I mean, it's a normal February. That is where uh, the, if you excuse, excuse the cliche uh, saying, where the boys are separated from the men, uh, this is where the people who get desperate leave. And um, this, these are where the guys who have a game plan know that their game plan is ready. And, uh, and that, you know, this is, this is where it starts right here. This is the part of the flight, uh, in the airplane, you know, on your next trip, you know, if, if new year's was takeoff and claim season was whenever the beverage cart gets to your seat, we're in between those things where you have to sit down and wait for the beverage cart kind of sucks, but we are moving forward and, um, and, uh, you know, be prepared. Because some of those, a generation of those tradesmen who are tired of doing the work and tired of gathering that data and tired of doing things the insurance way, they're gone, right? They stopped, uh, they stopped uh, uh, doing claims in, in November or um, October. And this may be the last year. They just decided they're not going to wait for it or whatever. But I, the turning of the tides has occurred. And it is, in my, in my opinion, um, the market is ripe for picking for you, for, for you guys that are, are preparing right now for this coming spring. I think this spring is going to be a great harvest for a lot of uh, new and inexperienced people. By the way, Jason, they're calling you the general in the chat box. I think uh, Brad Fancher uh, went ahead and coined you as the general. So leading the charge. <laughs> Very, I, I hope I motivated somebody there. This feels great. I mean, you have such a good audience and, and what a great panel of guests here. I don't know, you know, as far as level one and level two people, like you said, we're not the biggest out there, but we're darn sure giving it a good push. We're fighting for the scraps. Yeah. It, you know, it going almost interview style sounds like, but Jason, because you and I were kind of floating out there on this whole podcasting thing to see where the, the information flow ha is now culminating where, you know, Adam's coming on and, and Matthew Allen comes out of the nowhere with this ridiculous quality videos that I can't stand. It makes me sick. It looks so good, but it's like the IA now has such a better fighting chance than they did a year or two ago. I mean, would, do you agree? Like, I mean, I the think model, right. Chris, I'm going to interrupt right there. You betcha. The model was broken. Do you remember how greedy all the adjusters got uh, when we had a couple hurricanes? It was uh, Harvey and Irene, I think. And greed overtook the, uh, you know, the tide really came in far. It really became favorable for the independent adjuster uh, just two years ago you could find a job wherever you wanted one, it seemed like. And there were a ton of unqualified people out there with active pendings and, and those hurricanes hit and the man, those fee schedules got outrageous. I mean, you could make a fortune out in Florida off of Irene, you know, the, uh, the entire country's resources had been exhausted down in Harris County, Texas. And then that other monster just went over there. So there was like minimum billers of $900. 
you know, just, just for showing up and taking a few photos and saying, Hey, there's no coverage. Your house is gone. Uh, when that happened, the insurance industry said, no more, we have got to control these expenses. And that's exactly what happened. And that's why you are seeing a huge turning of where your average craftsman adjuster just can't cut it. Like he had the, the hustle. He just doesn't have it. The old school method of being on one or two rosters uh, and, and uh, having a choice they, they, that method is just broken and overdone and basically gone. It was the way of the, you know, the first generation cell phone people basically uh, was the adjuster pipeline. Now with social media and all that other stuff, those guys aren't hustling like y'all, man. They don't have that kind of hustle. They don't have that kind of desire. They don't think they should have it. And literally that is how the strong survive. They are no longer the strength of the adjusting class. It is the the next generation, and I think that's who, I think that's who you're selling the courses to, Chris. And I and uh, and if Kagan is any uh, demonstration of what this next generation has, I'm very proud to be leading it. Absolutely, man. Thank you so much uh, for being here, and uh, dude, just an honor to be a friend of yours, and an honor to have you on tonight. And sharing with everybody really appreciate hey, thanks chris thanks a lot it's, it's a pleasure to be on here this is great content i've been loving question of the day do you like longer videos like this let me know in the comments below where you're watching this video for much more information about becoming an independent adjuster head on over to adjustertv.com and don't forget that there are links to everybody who's featured in this video below where you're watching this video if you got value from this video, you can help me create more videos just like this by hitting the round subscribe button. Wondering what to watch next? Check out these videos. And as always, thank you so much for watching and have a great storm. Dear Algebra, stop asking me to find your ex. She's not coming back. Sincerely, Matt.